What's going on guys, Billy here, and this briefcase looking thing in front of me is a massive battery. It's made by a company called Jackery, and it's called the Explorer 500. That 500 stands for the 500 watt output power and the nearly 518 watt hour battery that is packed inside. As someone who spends a lot of time traveling, shooting photos and videos, I've become addicted to portable power over the years, and I found that it really is an important piece of my workflow. There is nothing worse than being put in a situation where I'm shooting all day long and I've got to end that that day early because one of my pieces of gear, the battery dies, or maybe multiple pieces of gear, my batteries die. And I've always found it a struggle to find a reliable charging solution for my drone batteries that are just a little bit more power hungry. As most of the people who follow my videos here on this channel will know, drones require a charge from a traditional AC outlet. At least the more powerful ones do, like the Mavic 2, the Mavic Air 2, the Autel Evo 2, the Phantom series of drones, the Inspire, etc, etc. Smaller drones like the Mavic Mini, the Paradonafi, and Skydio 2, on the other hand, and fortunately can be charged so long as you have an active USB port around, which are much easier to come by, especially when it comes to portable chargers. For this very reason, I found myself being limited as to how much I could fly my drone during the day before needing to find an area where I could charge my batteries back up. Whether it was a random outlet I could luckily find wherever I was flying at, whether it's taking a break during the day, stopping for lunch and waiting for the batteries to charge up, or whether it was charging my batteries from the 12 volt outlet in my car, driving from location to location, all of those scenarios are things that I want won't miss, and that's why I'm really happy that Jackery reached out and asked if I wanted to review their Explorer 500. Now, I should mention that this massive power station can be used for far more than just charging drone batteries, which we're definitely going to get to here in just a little bit. So the Explorer 500 comes equipped with various ports on the front, like the full AC outlet, three USB-A ports, which unfortunately only output 12 watts of power, and a 12-volt car outlet. Each set of ports can be individually turned on or off with the button sitting just above each set. At the top of the unit, just above these ports is our input for charging the battery itself, a display for viewing the remaining capacity as well as the input and output power in watts, and a button to temporarily illuminate the display. Now I want to take a moment to take a closer look at the ports on the front of this device because while a large battery that has a large capacity like this one will certainly turn some heads and while it definitely is made for a specific type of person, what really makes or breaks a big power station like this is the ports on the front. It's what allows us to access the charge and the power that's inside of this battery. So as we mentioned, we've got one AC outlet on the front. We've got a 12 volt adapter on the front, which I really barely ever use. Uh, and also we've got three USB-A ports. And that's where my biggest gripe is. There's no USB-C. There's no quick charge available through these ports. If we look at the Jackery Explorer 1000, which is a larger version of this battery, not only do we get three AC outlets, but we also get a USB-C port and a quick charging port. And I think it just comes down to this device being relatively older and in need of an update. I think it needs a facelift with some more, I guess, important ports on the front, make it more of a 2020 device rather than, I think it was 2016 when this device initially came out. So obviously things have changed in the past four years. USB-C is so much more prevalent in our lives. And I think it definitely needs to be added here on this device. Okay, so jumping back on track here, looking at the battery itself, the entire casing is made of plastic, which keeps the weight down. There's a handle at the top for transporting the battery. There's vents on the left and right side to help dissipate heat as an exit point for the fans. And there's also four rubber feet on the bottom for easy placement anywhere you find yourself bringing this thing. And also there's a flashlight integrated into the battery itself. I don't know how much use you're going to get out of that, but it's there if you're wondering. Uh, some other important things to note here is that the weight of the battery comes in at just under 13.5 pounds and the battery capacity is 518 watt hours or 144,400 milliamp hours. With that massive capacity, it took me about seven and a half hours to fully charge it off an AC outlet at a steady 80 watts. There are a few other ways we're able to charge up the Explorer 500 here. Of course, we mentioned the wall adapter that comes included. We've also got a 12 volt car adapter included to charge this battery. And of course, we can also use a solar panel. So the panel that I have is the Solar Saga 100 watt panel offered by Jackery, which comes in at a weight of 9.1 pounds and can output a maximum of 100 watts into this massive battery as the name suggests. But this is completely dependent upon the amount of light that reaches the panels. Of course, you'll see faster charging speed with full direct sunlight opposed to overcast or shady conditions. Now to dive a little bit deeper into the solar panel itself, it folds together here for travel and creates a handle at the top to carry it around. There's also a magnet in that top portion, so it'll stay together once you fold it. You don't have to worry about one side flopping down into the ground if you say lean it up against a wall. Now on the back side of the panel, there are two stands that prop the panel upwards to soak in more sun. Also on the back side is a small pouch that holds the always connected cord responsible for charging any of Jackery's power stations 
and two USB ports, one USB-A port and one USB-C port. But I should note that the USB-C port is only capable of outputting 15 watts. So don't expect this to be sufficient to plug a MacBook Pro into or to fast charge a phone. My preferred method for using the solar panel is to feed that captured energy into the battery and then let the battery administer power to the devices that I'm trying to charge. Usually I won't use the included USB-A or USB-C port on the solar panels itself just because I feel like I get a more consistent charge coming out of the battery. I don't have to deal with irregularities of, you know, more sun hitting the panel or maybe less sun hitting the panel when a cloud passes over. So I would rather just charge right off of the battery, but I guess I understand that it is a good thing to have the USB-A and USB-C port included directly on the solar panel if you're in a pinch. I also want to mention that the built-in screen allows you to monitor how much power is coming in through that solar panel, which is really important so that you can make adjustments if needed to maximize your input power. So as I mentioned in the beginning of this video, my main purpose for this power station will be to charge my drone batteries while I'm out flying so that I can ultimately fly more. Now, because of this, I wanted to learn how this would impact my workflow. I wanted to learn how many more charges I could get on my drone batteries if I brought this with me and ultimately how many more flights I could get out of this battery. So I ran a test. I systematically depleted drone batteries down to 15% and then recharged them to understand how many charges I could get out of this power station. I figured the best way to share this information with you guys is in table form here. So I went ahead and tested out this power station with some of the batteries from some of the more popular drones on the market right now, like the DJI Mavic Air 2, the DJI Mavic 2 series, and the Autel Evo 2 series. For each of these batteries, I kept track of the charging speed, how much time and percentage it took to charge one battery, and the total amount of batteries I could charge off of one full charge on the power station. Now, I'm not going to go through and read each individual cell here to you guys in this table. You guys can go ahead, pause the video, and read the information that pertains to the drone that you own. But I do just want to mention that I find it awesome that I'm able to get almost a full extra nine flights with my Mavic 2 Pro using the batteries I already own because of this $500 power station. Here's how I see things. Drone batteries are incredibly expensive. They truly are an investment in the drone itself. If you guys looked at the prices I included on the charging analytics table that I put together, these batteries cost anywhere between $120 and they can go all the way up to $200 if you get some of the higher end drones not included in my testing. And after you buy three or four of them, you've spent almost half the price of the actual drone itself. So here, let me lay out a scenario for you guys. Let's say that you own the Mavic 2 and let's say that you've got four batteries for it, but you find that that's just not enough power to get you through the day. Maybe some days you only fly two batteries and other days you only fly three batteries, but for those long flying days, you just don't have enough juice to make it to the end of the day and you're constantly trying to find areas where you can charge your battery. So if you want more power, do you buy a $500 power station that's gonna give you eight and a half more flights or do you buy eight more batteries at $150 a pop that costs a total of $1,200. Now look, you might not need eight more flights in a day, but remember, the power station is able to do so much more than just a regular Mavic 2 battery can do. You can charge other devices. You can recharge this battery on the go with a solar panel. There's just so much more flexibility when you get a power station opposed to getting a ton of extra batteries. Now, hold on. Let me quickly backpedal here. If you've only got one or two batteries for your drone, I'd probably recommend going out and buying some more until you have a total of three or four because if you've only got two batteries and you're simultaneously charging one while you're flying the other, you're going to catch up to yourself where you're waiting for that battery to fully charge before you can fly. But if you've got three or even four batteries, you can consistently cycle those batteries on the charger while you're flying the others, and you're probably going to be fine throughout the day. Um, now, I'm going to address a fairly big elephant in the room, and it's the fact that this battery is definitely bigger than individual drone batteries. You could easily fit 20 drone batteries in a backpack, but this is going to be pretty heavy and pretty bulky to carry around. Now, I do agree with you. This is much bigger than drone batteries, but the potential that comes with a power station like this totally outweighs the disadvantage of having a larger battery. I can easily carry this in my left hand walking from location to location. I can carry the solar panel in my right hand and I effectively have unlimited power for me and all my buddies I'm going to fly with. And that is a trade-off I'm definitely willing to take. Also, if you're going to be stationary flying from an area where you can just pull your car right up to a parking lot, you can keep this in the back seat. You can keep it in the trunk and keep your batteries on charge and you don't have to keep your car turned on to power that 12 volt out. Outlet. So I've spent this whole time talking about how this big battery here can be used to charge my drones on the go, when in reality, it is incredibly versatile. If you need something to be charged or powered, this thing can definitely handle it. 
I'm someone that absolutely loves to go camping, and while the recent travel restrictions really haven't enabled me to do much of that recently, I can only imagine how much better my life will be knowing that I can bring this mobile power station with me when I go camping, and I don't have to worry about trying to find power at a distant outlet because I've got it right here next to me. And I know I've already said it, but I've basically got unlimited power so long as I've got the sun and the solar panel to feed that captured energy into the battery itself. Now, I was taking a look on Jackery's website, and they do show that this power station can be used to power small appliances like mini fridges and can even power a CPAP machine which is a big deal for those of you who suffer from sleep apnea and need to power this device while on the road. I think though the main use that people will get from this massive power station is charging smaller devices like my drone batteries. You know, I would say the best use case that I've gotten out of this battery so far is the last time that Ken came up here, we just left this thing in my backseat with all of the chargers connected and it supplied us power throughout the day. We were charging multiple drone battery hubs off of the single AC outlet without a hiccup and we were charging smaller things like our phones and action cameras off of the three USB-A ports. During that day, we drove from Pennsylvania to New York to Connecticut all the way up to Rhode Island and the entire drive we had the Jackery sitting in the back of the car car jamming, charging all of our stuff, and we were simultaneously feeding energy back into the Explorer 500 through the 12 volt outlet in the back of my car. Now there were times where we were drawing more energy from the battery itself than we were putting back in, but at least we were putting energy back into it, so the battery was essentially dying a little bit slower, and then when we'd stop, we would feed the solar panel through the window, charge it up at a faster speed, and we were good for the whole entire day. There was absolutely no power constraints whatsoever. So guys, I just spent a lot of time talking about a battery, a battery that charges your stuff. Yes, I know that there's a lot more to it than just being a battery, but guys, this is something that has totally transformed my workflow. It's something that I bring with me every day, everywhere I go in the back of my car, and it has come in handy more times than one, especially on those really long days where I need a lot of power to charge up all the drones that I'm flying. Anyway guys, I'd love to hear what you have to say about the Explorer 500 down in the comment section below. And as always, I'll talk to you later. Peace.